Hey, it's Coach for Tactical Hive out on the range today. And there was some questions on a previous uh, video that I did about point shooting. So we're gonna clear up those questions right after this. Hey, today's video is brought to you by Vetter Holsters. It's a good quality, inexpensive American-made product. We use them for our force-on-force -force classes. You can get them for your, your just standard, you know, makes and models of your gun. Um, and these days, if you put a light on that sucker, you need to change your holster. So uh, they'll also do custom for your make and model of pistol uh, and the light. Check them out in the link below, and let's get back to the video. Okay, so in previous videos, I talked about point shooting, and I got a lot of questions about uh, whether that replaces good marksmanship or not. And no, the short answer, no, all right? It's reps, okay? The reason the bullet goes where I point my thumb is because I've built my grip and I've done that so many times while I'm looking at the sights, okay? So you, you get used to that, uh, you get those reps in. Now I know where that gun is pointed. Now to make it easier, we went and we, we reverse engineer. Well, I like to reverse engineer every technique that I develop uh, from, from the shooting platform. Okay, so if I'm shooting and I want my thumb to be up here, you know, using it like an index finger, you know, just pointing at the, at the target, well, I want this to be built around my gun, okay? So I build my grip around that gun and it just turns out that it makes a really good, solid, repeatable grip, okay? So we've reversed it from, from here. You just point your thumb, okay? If I, if I have some variability in my wrist, that's gonna cause issues with you know, my hits, right? So if I always go to the same spot, okay? So here I am, that pretty much is, pretty close to the same spot every time and it's good lock position. So that's where we start building our grip, okay? Uh, I've got videos out there on, on grip, but we'll just uh, go over it real quick. So I'm gonna bring my gun up. Now, I've showed you guys in previous videos how to make your grip, okay? Now I'm gonna show you how to build it because if I'm not gonna be able to draw and sit here like this and get that perfect grip and then start going to work, okay? You gotta get it from the holster. So your firing grip comes from the holster, you touch, you drive down, get that good firing grip there. You draw it up in front of your face here. Now this hand, uh, we have it up here just because that's good for you know, keeping your hands safe and you know all that. So we're up here like this. Now the, what's gonna happen next is once I, the sights are you know, in front of my face and the muzzle is down range on target, then this hand's gonna, just gonna come out. And the first place I'm gonna put is this, I'm gonna shoot straight out and get here. Okay, so my index finger comes up and finds that trigger guard. And then I'm gonna roll my thumb forward and touch the frame. Now as I press out, I'm gonna press my hand together. Okay, so what it looks like from this side, I'm here, not like this, because if I had to shoot, I could shoot, you know, and, and possibly get a hit on a target if he's close. Okay, now this hand's gonna come and just find that trigger guard, roll the thumb here, and then as I press out, that's when I'm gonna build my grip together. That's how we teach it to start with. As it becomes more natural uh, and you get the reps in, it'll all start smoothing out and coming together. But if you don't go slow and like on your draw, you bring it up, stop, you know, go index finger, thumb, and then you can press out. And as you press out, you're pressing the heels of your hands together. And that'll give you that good solid grip once you're out there. Okay. And this comes down to reps, guys. All right, so the important thing is to train this, okay? How do you train it? Well, you're gonna start off moving really slow and robotic and working those, those getting, developing that what they call muscle memory, right? Now, some people will call this instinctive shooting, but it's not instinctive. If it was, you would just naturally know how to do it. It's not instinctive, it's point shooting, 
okay? You're pointing at the target, you're focused on the target, and then you're gonna add pressure to that trigger and your shots will go where you're looking. But only if you've done the proper training so that you're in that same spot every time, okay? Now, obviously, if you have the time, then you're gonna use your sights. It seems obvious, but if you have no time because your threat is really close, you're staring at that threat anyway, and if I point at him and that thumb is lined up with that barrel, I'm gonna get a decent hit. But that's quick and tight. As the threat gets a little farther away, I'm gonna have a little more time, and the shot is gonna be more critical. So now I'm really gonna be looking for those sights to make that shot, okay? I could still point at him and still shoot, and I might get that shot, but if I really need to, you wanna be on your sights. So in my experience, uh, granted, there was a lot of other stuff going on at the time. Uh, I don't remember seeing my sights during close quarter combat, okay? Uh, now, a little more clinically here. Um, we've done post-training uh, interviews with our uh, force on force trainees, and honestly, none of them has said that they use their sights when they're in close. So this is a really good, valuable technique, but you have to have the marksmanship there first and then you develop this one. All right, so what's some good ways to get the reps in? You know, you can stand on the range, you can dry fire, dry fire. I recommend dry fire because you can just do it any time. When you get to the range, yeah, you can practice on your own, um, you know, depending on where you go, whether you can draw uh, from the holster or a lot of indoor places, they won't let you do that. So, but you can always start from, from here with the muzzle down range and work at least getting, you know, building that grip properly. So one good way to get those reps in with a little bit of stress is do some competition shooting. Everybody likes a little bit of competition, or you should, you know, get your blood going a little bit, uh, and it will, it builds that muscle memory. You get those reps in, in, in a kind of a fun way. Competition shooting is, should not be a, a substitute for if you're going to deal with close quarters battle. Competition has, there's a lot of uh, issues with just going fast, but when, if it's just for this, just for that draw, just for getting used to uh, finding your hands together, pushing forward, most of your competition shooters, close in targets, they're not, they're not aiming. You know, they're point shooting at the close targets, but you'll notice, you know, they get farther targets, they take a little bit extra time because that, there's that time and distance, right? And they got to get that A zone hit. So Miles has been doing a lot of uh, competition shooting lately. So he's going to come in and he's got to set up a little course here and we'll run it with and without sights. All right, so now we're gonna get Miles in here and he's gonna give you the course of fire. Now, coach? Now? <laughs> I've been saying that the whole time, guys. <laughs> All right, so I'll explain it. We have a, a little mini course of fire here that is very typical of what you would see in the competition world. And as coach has probably alluded to, competition is just a great way. I, I do it a lot. One of the main purposes, probably the biggest reason I do competition is to constantly work this, the, the, the motion, presenting, and just indexing, getting that natural point of aim. And so we have this little course of fire. We have paper targets that are between three and seven yards away. And then we have some steel targets, which are further out. Those will be, you know, they, those can be difficult targets if you're not using your sights or anything like that. But they're about maybe 12 to 15 yards away. Okay, and what we're going to do, be doing is we're going to be shooting these targets without using our sights. So. Coach has his red dot. He's going to be covering up his red dot. And I'm going to be covering up my uh, iron sights. I actually have them okay, right here. I have them taped up. Okay, so I can't see anything. And you're going to see that if you work on those mechanics, over time you're going to have a good index. Okay, so this is what Coach and I are going to do. And we'll do it in different ways. Okay, I'm just going to do it in, the, in a typical sport way. Coach will take it more tactically. Okay, so we're going to start kind of in the middle. We are going to run to this barrel. And then we're gonna engage two targets here. We're gonna engage this paper target, two shots, then one steel silhouette with just one shot. From there, we're going to move just to also show that you can move and shoot without seeing your sights if you have good mechanics. Two shots on the paper, then move around this barrel, two shots on that piece of paper, 
come around and one of the steel silhouettes. So those steel silhouettes are again about 12, 15 yards away. And uh, who knows, just to just for comparison, just to kind of see, we may even engage the ones that are about 20, 25 yards away. And just to kind of see without using your sights, you know, if we can hit it, if, if we can't. All right, guys, coach is gonna go first. He's going to run the course of fire, not timed. He's going to do it uh, more tactically and uh, for accuracy. All right, ready, coach? Yep. Okay. Threat. Okay, so I wasn't really rolling for time, just using my cover, um, just point shooting, got an A zone and a C zone, two good combat hits. All right, not the best, but hey, what are you gonna do? Uh, and then that small reduced target out there, it's about 20 yards away. Uh, that's a little more challenging when you're just pointing your, uh, your thumb. So you slow down a little bit, even without sights. And now we're at target two, this is the one on the move. Again, just pointing, Pointing your thumb at the target, got an A zone and a C zone. Almost the same thing, moving. So it's about the same there. It's just having that good stable platform being squared up. This is where your natural point of aim is. <clears throat> got two, target three here. Two A zone hits. I was behind cover, I had a little bit more time and I took my, took my time pointing my thumb, all right? And then the last shot there was about Oh, 15 yards, I think I don't like the third try, but you know, that's a fairly small target for the distance. So all in all, not a horrible run. Okay, so obviously if I didn't have taped up sights, I would want to use them for the farther targets. So I'm gonna run it again. Yeah, again, not for time, just, you know, being smooth, using my cover, uh, and this time I won't be taped up. All right, coach, ready? Okay. Round two. Here we go. Threat. All right, second run. This time I had my sights. Well, the shots improve a little bit here, but they're still I have the, right on the edge of the A and C zone, a little closer together and maybe a little faster, but I could see what the hell I was doing. But first shot, I was on target at 20 yards and it just took a little bit extra time. Again, time and distance, right? And then on the move, target two here, a little low, kind of in the, in the C zone, just under the A, but decent group, just moving and shooting. Again, I'm looking at the target just kind of looking through my sights. I could see the red dot bouncing around in there, but I wasn't really trying to get too snail light on it, making it to line it up. Use my cover, came out. Two decent shots here. A little off center, but decent group. And then first shot on the far target. Again, that one I used my sights. So if you can, use your sights if you don't have time that's when that, that point shooting technique really comes into uh into play now miles is going to run a little more competition he's not going to be as concerned with cover uh and we'll you know he, the time stress is what we're looking for here and guys that time stress that is going to force your body to kind of push this down into the into the subconscious, right? That little adrenaline in there, you know, all those little things come into play. Again, it's not a replacement for CQB training, but it's good for this particular technique. All right, I'm gonna run it, uh, the course of fire, just like Coach mentioned, more of a competition style, and I'm using a Glock 19, and my sights are completely taped up. All right, here we go. Okay, so that was a 788. Um, so these are two alpha, okay, uh, from the paper. That one I had to take two shots. So that was the 15, 20 yard shot. Yard shot. Um, so I had to pick, have one pickup shot. Then on the move, not using sights, two alpha. Okay, this one, the tape is coming off. This is from a previous run, fell off, but two alpha here. 
Then rounding the corner, got uh, an Alpha Charlie, and then nailed the silhouette there. So that was a 788 without using sights, right? Um, clearly that target that was further out, I had to pause a little bit, make sure I missed the first shot. So I was adjusting my body. I was literally aiming with my body, not the sights, right? Now what we're gonna do is we'll compare the times. I'm gonna use my sights now and see how it fares with uh, the time. Okay, so this time I've taken the tape off my sights and we'll compare the performance. Okay, so this run with my sights was faster. Um, not an equal test in the sense that my accuracy was a little bit worse, but I was pushing the time a little bit more. That, that's on me. Um, but this is an Alpha Charlie, pretty much similar to the, the first uh, shot. Steel plate I hit really quick um, because I could see my sights now. And then over here we have two Charlie on the move. This is where I got a little reckless. I was just like, oh, I'm just gonna blast it, right? So I didn't actually use my sights even though my sights were not taped. And then over here, this was an Alpha Charlie like the previous run, and then nailed the plate. So it was faster um, by more than a second, or about a second, and um, is there a huge difference? I think that if I was shooting at the same cadence on the paper, there wouldn't really have been a difference. But I think the, the key here that we're trying to get at is it is about that muscle memory. So whether you have sights or you don't have sights, based on your skill level, you should be able to hit that target without using your sights or your red dot if it's within your, your skill level. Um, clearly, the steel plates are something that I can hit at this distance, but if it was, let's say, a 50 yard shot, I might miss. And still though, I'm still gonna work the proper mechanics to potentially get there in the future without sights. All right, so there you got it. Uh, two different techniques, you know, Miles is working the clock and I'm working the cover, basically. Not too concerned with the speed. Don't worry about that. The basic idea behind this whole video was just we're using that, those techniques, right? Point shoot where you have to, where the time and distance you know, uh, demands it, and then get on those sites for further shots to make it more accurate. Mm -hmm. And the coach mentioned, this is not about the way we're running it. The, the skill set that you probably have noticed that's transferable is what coach is talking about, that point shooting, or some will call it indexing or natural point of aim. Doesn't matter how you run it, we were relying on that and it works. Uh, one thing to, that coach alluded to, and this is pretty cool, the more you do this and the more you improve your skills, that distance and the size of the target for something that's difficult for you, maybe let's say, let's pretend it's 10 yards and you have to use your sights. The more you do this and the more you get better, now you might be able to point shoot at 15 yards, 20 yards. So it's just a matter of progress and improvement. So remember guys, practice makes permanent, okay? Perfect practice makes perfect, all right? If you like this content, like, subscribe, leave me some comments.